Michael Porter Jr. really emerged last year as a guy that was the player we all thought he was going to be before that injury. Would have been the first or second pick in that draft. He's put up incredible numbers for a guy that's only played two years in the NBA, and the sky is the limit. Michael Porter Jr., I think, has a chance to be a star. The Nuggets are still a, a small market team. They've already maxed out Jokic and Jamal Murray. I think they want Michael Porter Jr. badly. It's just at what price. Denver took a chance on me four years ago when they drafted me, and I told them draft night, and I say it again, I want to be the best draft pick that Denver has ever had. So. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be tough, but I know how hard I'm gonna work, and so this was just another one of those off seasons. basketball three years old and literally ever since I remember the NBA was my only plan like in school like I would I would do school and I, I enjoyed school but I never really fell in love with anything outside of basketball so all of my effort was to just getting better and better and you know God bless me there's some things he gave me that you know you can't really teach you can't teach 610 and you can't teach I don't think you could teach a work ethic that I had, but um, it was just it was just something that I felt like I was meant to do. I was meant to hoop, and so I put all my energy and effort into that. My name is Nicodemus Christopher and uh, I am Michael's strength and conditioning coach, uh, bodyguard, manager, uh, anything that you could think of that needs to get done. <laughs> I, I'm here to make sure that uh, he, he can focus on the court, he can focus on the weight room, his day goes as seamless as possible. What is Michael's ceiling? I, I don't know if he has one. We, uh, I feel like we're still at the starting line <laughs> and we're about to make that first step. So uh, if you look at his gradual progression over the last few years and what we've been able to accomplish and to know that we're just getting started we haven't even made that first step off the starting line. Uh, to answer what his ceiling would be would be would be disrespectful to him. It, it wouldn't do him due diligence because uh, the amount of work that he's willing to put in, uh, the amount of effort that it takes to push himself to achieve the greatness and, and everything that goes into it, uh, Michael's willing to do it all. Um, I can't limit him and say that he has a ceiling. I don't know what it is, but uh, one thing that I do know is that we're going to work as hard as we can to find out uh, what that limit is. Okay. I So Mike and I have actually known each other for a long time, going back even before we started training together. Our families were close friends together, so I really got to watch Mike uh, grow up and spend some time around him at a young age. Then we started training together when he was a junior in high school, and uh, yeah, haven't looked back ever since. Just get that little turn right here. To the next, I'll just pass to you. It's been fun because our relationship has grown throughout the years where I've got to spend a lot of time on court obviously and helping him pursue his passion of the game of basketball and my passion of training. He's just an enjoyable person to be around. We always laugh, we always have a good time.
I mean, the dude is 6'10", ultra athletic, and shoots the basketball as well as anybody in the NBA. And the scary thing is he is just starting to scratch the surface of what his true potential is as an NBA basketball player. With his extreme work ethic and his desire to truly be great, he's constantly adding stuff. We added stuff last offseason, he's adding stuff this offseason, and he is just starting on his path to what he's going to be as a finished basketball player. So it is going to be scary for the rest of the NBA when he really reaches his prime. I was one of the Garfield ones, so we can see what we did the year. There's one video on here. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. That's why I'm lucky glad you got that year of the Zoom with that one. Because you got that. I never wanted one. I never wanted one. Who are they? What are these kids? Four years old? What is. Hell, watch him. Watch him. Watch him. What are they? This is illegal. These guys should never be. What are they? I have one that's for sure my best dunk ever. <laughs> Let me ask you. What's going through your mind when you take off? You're like, I guess I'll just dunk it? I remember just taking like this and jumping. And then like when I jumped, the dude kind of like boosted me a little bit. But I lost the ball in the air and I got it again and I dunked it. But like, I took off from almost a free throw. What was your first year? Eighth grade. That's when I really started getting some attention a little bit. Uh, went, to, went to junior high down in Columbia, Missouri at Jefferson Junior High. So we, we uh, went undefeated. And it was just like, that was when people really started to recognize me. Like our, our games were selling out. People were coming to watch me play. I ended up going to Tolton, Tolton High School. Ninth grade year, we did really well. I think I averaged about 25 points. And then I vividly remember my sophomore season. I had a dunk that went viral. Um, we were playing in a consolation game in a tournament, and there was a dunk where I almost took off from the free throw line, and there was a, but there wasn't many people in the stands because it was a consolation game. And I remember walking out, about to walk out the uh, stadium that night, and a guy taps me on my shoulder like, yo, I got, that, I got that dunk on video. He ends up sending it to me, and I posted on Vine. I posted it on Vine um, back when Vine was popping and it got like millions of views overnight and then people really started to know my name. From there, I started getting invited to camps, started getting ranked nationally. Um, and so then high school, I remember getting ranked for the first time, I think in eighth, ninth grade, around 25th. And then for me, man, things just kept climbing, climbing, climbing until I was the number one player in the country. That was a crazy experience. And then, you know, I went to Mizzou and my plan the whole time was to be there a year and to dip after that. So it's crazy where I am now, man. I still got a lot of goals, a lot of basketball ahead of me, but um, my journey so far has been a unique one, but it's, it's been God's plan for me. I'm about to ball on him, just like a young match. Truth in my verses, I move with a purpose. Remember them days when they said I was worthless. They ain't put no work in it, they to deserve it. I gave him my all cause I knew it was worth. Where was you at when a young nigga hurt? So many freckles, I feel like I'm cursed. You making a year, I can make it a verse. These niggas scared me to take him to church. Yeah, yeah. Rap music gave me confidence. confidence. Now we toasting to accomplishments. Get them comments, man, it's common sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rap music gave me confidence. Now we toasting to accomplishments. Comments, man, it's common sense. Rockefeller gave me confidence. confidence. Death Row gave me confidence. confidence. Bad boy gave me confidence. confidence. Had to catch you like some condiments. Outcast gave me confidence. I don't want to keep taking just days off until it feels perfect. No, no, no. no. We're, we're good now in that sense because we've got today. So the only day that we're really taking off is tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, we're holding 100%. There's no rotation, nothing. Shout out to Tuck. Best chiropractor in the world. Dr. Ryan Tuxer, 5280 Cryo and Recovery Clinics out here in Denver, Colorado. Um, so yeah, I've been working with Mike for the last little over two years, uh, halfway through his rookie season. Um, and we're seeing a lot of progression in you know, low back functionality, pain levels, just being able to stay on um, the court, um, getting a lot of you know the nerve pain that he was having, um, and issues in the muscles. Um, gone away, uh, getting him functionally, getting him to where he's not having you know, flare-ups, not having a lot of issues uh, on the court. So 
Treatment wise, what we've been doing for him is a lot of active release technique, Graston cupping, chiropractic, uh, physical therapy, a lot of cryotherapy to help with that pain, that inflammation, uh, speed up the healing process, uh, hyperbaric chambers, Normatec compression, and through there, spinal decompression for the disc uh, injury. So a lot of different things has really gone into treatment for Mike over these last, you know, a little over two years. Boy, got a frostbite, don't he? <laughs> Something about Michael that most people don't know. Uh, <laughs> Michael is goofy, <laughs> like certified goofy. Uh, if w when we're in the weight room or when we're handling business or on the court or whatever it might be. Uh, he's, he's in grind mode, but the second the horn blows or that workout is over, like, it's non-stop laughs, uh, non-stop fun. You know it just comes easy to me. I could dress like this every day if I wanted to, but I just choose not to, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking too pretty, it's not going on the episode. Great skin. Probably on that one. See that, Sean? <laughs> Dude is goofy. Uh, what's something else? Oh. Mike thinks he has hands, right? Uh, Sean, Sean can attest to this because he got a little quick clip of us. I whooped him. You know, I let him get a taste of boxing, and now all of a sudden he's Mike Tyson or Javante Davis. So we're going to see if, if those boxing skills improve as fast as his basketball skills are improving. Seeing me cooped up, caged up in a house is like seeing a gorilla in a zoo. They don't belong. Yeah, exactly. Leave me in the wild where I belong. That's where we're different. Gorilla. This is the wild for me. I'm in my natural habitat. I am. Let me uh, shoot my shit real quick. When I shoot, ayy, they gon' get a tie fake. Ooh, she bad, and she always tryna ride they food. Speak the truth, keep it three kid like a mandre. Can't relate to this, cause we grew around different things, man. Uh Michael's work ethic is ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. Michael, as soon as he, you know, one of his goals his entire life was to make it to the NBA. Once he got there, and then he got a taste of it, it's then, well now my goals are much higher. I don't wanna just be an NBA player. I want to be one of the best to ever do it. So you, it's obvious when working with him and working him out, he gets frustrated with himself when he feels like, oh, I'm not having a good workout or my shot's not falling. He has very high expectations for himself because he doesn't want to just be another guy, not even just another good NBA player. He wants to be one of the best. And so he treats every workout like that, which is we're not settling for anything less. If we didn't do well in this drill, we're redoing it because that's what it takes to truly reach that great level of potential that we all know he has. Shoot, man, Mike Messer, um, that's my guy. You know, we've been working together ever, ever since I was in high school. We developed a relationship way back in the day because our parents actually grew up together. So um, when Mike became a trainer, you know, he hit me up and he was just like, let's get some work in. So we started working out. And um, ever since then, he's been my go-to guy, you know, to get the work in. Every offseason, we've been putting in reps. Um, one thing I love about Mike is just how much he believes in me. You know, he's probably outside of my family, like my biggest fan. You know, he watches every game, breaks down all the film. He already knows my game so well, so we're working on things that I already do well. And then we're also working on my weaknesses, but it's nothing outside of my natural game. So, I man, Mike is like a brother to me, um, and I look forward to continuing to build with him. Uh, 
one of the big things that, that we worked on specifically this off season is A, making sure that Michael improves his strength. Everything that we do is movement efficiency, right? We wanna make sure that he's getting from point A to point B as efficient as possible, whether it's on offense or defense. I'm pleased with, with his gains this off season and the things that he's achieved and shoot, we're, we're still working. We're still working, it's a work in progress. Hey, my name is Jake, Jake Davis. I'm Chef Thank You. I've been cooking for Michael for about two years now. And Michael loves all the food I make. He's super grateful every time I serve him a dish. He says thank you and he's very polite and kind. So I feel blessed to cook for him. Let me invite you into the kitchen a little bit. <sighs> Shout out to Chef Thank You. This is what you call a good batch. This was half the battle to become great. Your diet. Take notes, kids. Starts out with a circle of romaine. Leave a little room there for some rice. We are gonna put our chicken also in the middle. Excuse me, we're gonna put beans, pico and guac. About to eat this buffalo chicken salad. You know, this is one of my favorite meals that this guy right here makes. Um, I always talk about it, but nutrition is one of the most important things for me and keeping me feeling good, recovering and everything. So when I got licked up with Chef Thank You, I feel like my performance and my um, recovery and everything just took a whole nother step. He was with me all last year and this has really helped me along the way. So about to dig into this buffalo chicken salad right now. Yes, sir. Man, ever since I was young, I can remember I wanted to be an NBA player. But I didn't just want to be an NBA player, you know, I wanted to be a star. I wanted to be one of the best to ever do it. And ever since that day that I picked up a ball, I've been working towards that goal. Ever since I've gotten in the NBA, every offseason, I've been putting in the work, trying to make a leap every year. The goal this year is to not have an all-star break. You know, I want to be playing in the all-star game. But more than that, you know, I think the team goal is a championship. For us, we got the, we got the roster. Um, we got the culture, and now it's time to do it. So you know what I'm saying? Championship is what we say every day. We say championship on three, and we mean that. Championship's the goal. 